In the previous tutorial, we reached the conclusion that the standing wave pattern in a slab waveguide can be created by plane waves propagating in symmetrical directions in a waveguide as if they were just coming in from free space from far away, as long as the double reflection in the waveguide produces a plane wave that's identical to the incident plane wave, what we called A and A prime. And we came up with this resonance condition that the reflection coefficients time of, for those two bounces has got to equal exactly one, which is to say that the phase of that reflection, double reflection, has to be an integer number of two pi's. So let's unpack this equation now and see what that implies about the relationship between the thickness of the waveguide and the angle that the beam is propagating at. So I'm going to cancel out a lot of what we see on the screen and just retain this equation. So we want to know how to maintain this resonance condition here. So now we draw upon some things that we know. Let's start with the reflection coefficient at x equals 0. So that's total internal reflection, what we call TIR. And we know that total internal reflection, it's going to have a magnitude of 1. And then there's going to be a phase term, which I'm going to call E to the minus I times 2 psi. And we already know that this phase 2 psi is equal, I'll write it up here, psi is equal to the arctangent of what we call Q imaginary over Kx, and that's equal to the square root. So is it sine squared of theta critical or sine squared of theta 1? Well, I'm looking for this, the magnitude of the imaginary component of Q. So this should be the square root of a real number. And the sine squared of the larger angle minus the sine squared of the smaller angle is what's going to give us the square root of a real quantity. So since theta 1 is bigger than theta critical, this must be what I'm taking the square root of. And then that's divided by the cosine of theta 1. This is not hard to memorize because kx is simply equal to k cosine theta 1. And q imaginary has a k out in front times these two terms. So the k here cancels out the k here. And you're just left with a simple ratio of angles where you don't even ever need to know the wavelength or the wave vector or anything. That's the, that's the phase shift psi. The total phase shift of a reflected beam is negative 2 psi. So if that's the reflection coefficient for the reflection at x equals 0, we know that the reflection coefficient at d for the same physics is going to be same magnitude, same phase shift. But then we have this term from a previous tutorial where I've got to multiply by the fact that this reflection is not at x equals 0, but it's at some generalized location d. So that becomes my reflection coefficient at d. And that now I can write out my resonance condition. And I could write out r times r and e to the i. But I'm going to directly cut to, at, to making the phases equal. So I'm going to set the exponents equal. The exponent of this product here is going to be negative 4 psi plus 2 kxd. That's this side's phase. This side's phase is simply m times 2 pi. Let's divide everything by 2, and I will get that kxd, which by the way, equals k cosine of theta incident, theta 1, times d, equals, well, I've divided everything by 2. So I've got m pi. 
And then I've got divided this by 2 and brought it to the other side, so that's plus 2 psi. And this becomes our equation that governs what the relationship is between the angle that the light is traveling at, the wavelength of the light in the waveguide, and the thickness of the waveguide. It's governed by being an integer number of pi plus some extra phase due to the total internal reflection at each interface. There's two of them because there's a reflection on the first bounce and on the second bounce. And there's a very physical way to relate to this equation as well. If we draw a boundary at x equals 0 and a boundary at x equals d, and we think about this standing wave in here, what we are saying is that over this distance d of the, the phase difference of this standing wave between the left boundary and the right boundary, that's exactly kxd. That's the phase dif difference between here and here. Remember that we wrote in a previous tutorial that the electric field as a function of xy and t of this standing wave in x and traveling wave in y was equal to e naught cosine of kxx plus psi and then there was also times an additional cosine term for the y and t dependence which you don't need to write cosine of kxx so between x equals 0 and x equals d the phase difference between those two locations for this electric field is going to be kx times d that's the difference in phase between being at x equals 0 and x equals d so the total phase accumulated between here and here is kxd and that's got to be equal to here I will identify where all of the antinodes are like this and the rule is that the phase difference this is exactly half of a wavelength right, we're at a minimum there's a maximum there's a minimum again so this is one wavelength this is half a wavelength a wavelength has a phase of pi so if I total all of these up I'll have a certain number of pi's plus I've got this little extra bit of phase here those extra little bits of phase are this two psi term over here. We've got one on each end. Here's the one on the right hand side. So now we can physically see what the condition is for resonance of a mode in a slab waveguide is that the, the standing wave is going to have some number of antinodes plus a little bit of extra phase due to the total internal reflection event. So you just draw out a wave with a certain number of antinodes. The smallest number of antinodes you can have would be 1. In that case, m would be 0 because there'd be no two antinodes to have a phase of pi between. So m, smallest number could be 0. Then you go on 1, 2, and so on. And then you have to have extra phase due to the total internal reflection event.